ओके आई विल स्टार्ट नाउ सो वेल टूडेज टॉपिक इज कृष्ण नाम कृष्ण काम एंड कृष्ण धाम सो दिस दिस वॉज अ स्लोगन सेट बाय भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर कृष्ण नाम कृष्ण काम एंड कृष्ण धाम एंड ई रोट इट सो इन so uh, so in his gaudiya math he wrote this on the wall to help devotees understand that what is krishna consciousness if you ask what is krishna consciousness there are many definitions given by prabhupad many perspectives but this is one pre- concise and precise definition of krishna consciousness so krishna means holy name krishna nam krishna kaam means service some activity for krishna and krishna dham means either you can say it as holy place or you can say it as association of devotees because wherever there are devotees that's holy place and association of devotees means transaction of knowledge and transaction of knowledge means books so krishna consciousness is just three things chanting holy names doing something for krishna serving him and associating with devotees that's all if you do this you are krishna conscious of course with a proper mentality that we will talk but this is a simple definition but the point is why bhakti syanta made this slogan krishna kaam krishna naam krishna dham uh why because to help us understand you need to balance these three all these three are important in their own perspective you have to balance you have to balance chanting holy names associating devotees or reading books is the same thing if you read books it's association of prabhupad and serving krishna so that balance uh, so about that balance i'll talk on the last day that balance is required because sometimes we chant and we forget reading books sometimes we read books we forget chanting sometimes we associate with devotees but then we are doing something else except transaction of knowledge something else is going on so we have to take care that's why he made this phrase krishna naam krishna kaam krishna dham so these three topics so there are three topics in one phrase and these three topics i am going to discuss in three days that's the my idea because you can't finish one topic in a whole topic in one day so the first topic i am going to discuss is krishna dham krishna dham means as taking association of devotees or in other words reading prabhupad books if you want to associate with prabhupad you have to read his books that's all prabhupad says if you want to understand me read my books and the next day and the next seminar topic i'll take as uh, krishna naam art of chanting that's when we have shri and bhagavatam class when is that saturday saturday morning and then on sunday evening i'll take the third topic krishna kaam that is the art of service love lust and service so that's how i designed this so this is the first topic of that seminar krishna kaam krishna naam krishna kaam krishna dham and the first topic is krishna dham i start with books okay so let's start this seminar now now this uh, having said that about krishna dham uh, now i just told holy place is defined by devotees now shri bhagavatam says uh, if there are no devotees that holy place is fit for crows and cows and donkeys and whatever whatever animal you have <laughs> so that's not good for any human being so besides that holy place wherever there are devotees holy place automatically manifest and krishna says uh, krishna says there's a verse for that naham tishthami vaikuntho yogi naam hridayeshu va yogi naam hridayeshu va yad gayanti mat bhakta tatr tishthami narada So Krishna is saying to Narad Muni, "I don't live in Bakunta. 
I don't live in hearts of yogis. Wherever my devotees sing my holy names and talk about me, there I am. Just like now. Krishna is here. Krishna might be there in Golok and Vakund, but his mind is here. So wherever your mind is, you are there, isn't it? If you are sitting here and your mind is somewhere in the mall, you are not here. Although your physical body is here. So he is attracted in that way. So that is why uh, if we read Prabhupada books and we discuss it and we understand that, then there is Prabhupada and there is Krishna. You see? So this phrase, I shall never die, I shall live forever in my books, this said by Prabhupada in Sai of Self-Realization. And uh, why Prabhupada said this? Because reading books is associating with Prabhupada. That's all. Uh, so Bhakti Thakur has written a poem and he says that, he says that, uh, he says a Vaishnav never dies, he forever lives in the, in his words, isn't it? A devotee forever lives in his words, he's there. In the beginning there was word, W-R-D, and then everything manifested, no, Bible, that's. So that's why books and knowledge, that is important. So knowledge defines, transaction of knowledge defines how much you are associating with devotees. Now, I'm, uh, we might be sitting in this temple 24 hours with devotees, but if we don't discuss something, that's not association. That's not association, by the way. If, if, if you're not chanting, if you're not reading books, if you're not discussing something, uh, Krishna says in Gita, 10th chapter, 9th verse, Machit madgata prana bodhyanta parasparam kathyantas chamam nityam Devotees should come together and discuss discuss philosophy, have doubts and have discussions. That is a, Prabhupada said, that is a purpose of temple. That is why this nice building is there. Because ultimately knowledge matters. The, the, the less knowledge you have, the more, there are, the more you are an, a neophyte, a new devotee, the more there are chances of confusion. That's all, isn't it? That's all. The more knowledge you have, the more expert you are in the subject. That's there in material world also. That's there in spiritual world also. So, why Prabhupada said this? I shall never die, I shall live forever in my books. Why he said this? To help us realize that we must read his books. And why he, why he was emphasizing on reading his books? Because in 1972, he wrote a letter to Hamsadu, 22nd July, and he saw that devotees are not reading his books. And, and the legacy continues today, that of not reading books. Nobody is reading Prabhupada books. And that is the root cause of all problems in his con. 95% problems. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that's good. I hope people are watching that and <laughs> listening. Well, that's very nice. But yeah, so that, that culture has to be there in our movement. Our reading books, discussing books, discussing philosophy, which is lacking now to a large extent. Uh, that culture of party, prasad, you know, that is more. That is not bad to have prasad and, and spiritual festivals. Prabhupada said that. But that everything is, everything is designed to help us take knowledge, to supplement that and not to complement that, not to replace it. That's not a good idea. That is so, uh, so in corporate world they say, you know, work hard, party hard, you know. <laughs> they say like that. So, so Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Prabhupada wrote a letter to Hamsadut and Prabhupada saying to Hamsadut, so let us concentrate on training our devotees very thoroughly in knowledge of Krishna consciousness. Note the words, Prabhupada said, let us concentrate on training the devotees. Now, we are not here to read the books, but we are here to get trained in those books. And that's a very important point, training. Prabhupada said read sometimes, and Prabhupada, actually Prabhupada used this word many times, train. And there's a difference between reading and training. You know why? Because even Narottam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya and Shamanand Pandit. They were like pure devotees. 
I'm a Gaudiya Vaishnava. Narutam Das Thakur, we know he was a pure devotee. Even before meeting Jiva Goswami, he got love of God. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he himself gave him love of God through Padma River. We all know that. They were pure devotees, they were so elevated, but nevertheless, they had to go to Jiva Goswami to get trained in philosophy. They had to learn that. So we have to get trained, not if, if you... If you get if you get trained in knowledge, that will train your mind. And if your mind is trained, your actions are trained. And if your actions are trained, your behavior, your character is trained. You see, it all it all goes like that. So that is why training is necessary. Training means a systematic understanding of knowledge. That's training. And reading means you're just reading from somewhere or the other, isn't it? So Prabhupada says training, and that's what Prabhupada said, we should have courses, we should be offered to devotees, we should have a college connected to temple, Prabhupada always said. Today also I was reading, Tamal Krishna Maharaj was saying to Prabhupada, uh, so in one of the room conversations, Tamal Krishna Maharaj was saying to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, uh, so you wanted a, a college in Kurukshetra? Prabhupada said, yeah, but, uh, uh, but wherever you have a big land, you try to make everything there, make a college. Because Prabhupada saw many devotees are coming to temple, but they are not trained properly. So what is happening is like, we, we all hear lectures, we all read books, but it's very random. You see, if you ask any devotee, okay, Prabhu, uh, can you speak for half an hour on illusion? Most other devotees will not be able to speak, no. They know, but they can't speak. Because it's not systematic in their mind. And if... And if thoughts are not systematic and they're chaotic, if your thoughts are chaotic, chaotic, your actions will be chaotic. Isn't it? So everything should be put properly. That's why Prabhupada said train. Uh, thoroughly knowledge of Krishna consciousness from our books and from tapes. So books means, uh, books means all these books of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavatam, Gita and this and this. From tapes means Tapes means what? Room conversations, which are recorded, lectures, and what else? Uh, morning walks. By discussing always and in so many ways, instruct them in right proposition. Some, some devotee says, no, tapes and, le and morning walks and room conversations and letters are very contextual and this and that. You know, so Prabhupada, when he writes letters, he writes a letter to a person. So it's very specific and very contextual. But that idea is correct, but 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 that's wrong also because in letters and conversations Prabhupada is giving so many general instructions so many and they are specific but they are general instructions also and by specific instructions you learn something you, know? you also learn now uh, having said this I'm going to show you now why reading Prabhupada books are very important what is there in his books that is emphasizing so much. Why Prabhupada is saying, read my books? Pra Prabhupada once said, I didn't write these books. Krishna made me write. And that was literal, Prabhupada was saying. And that's where Prabhupada used to hear his own books. In Los Angeles, no? Prabhupada used to sit, we see that, and devotees are reading Krishna book. And Prabhupada is reading, and so, so devotees are saying, Prabhupada, you are hearing your own books. Prabhupada said, because Krishna, Krishna wrote it. So, what is there in Prabhupada book? What's so special in Prabhupada books? Can you see that? You have to little. So, Prabhupada books have teachings of all previous acharyas. And, and not just teachings of all previous acharyas, which will make you just scholarly, but also irresistible enthusiasm. Prabhupada books doesn't offer you just a, a body of knowledge which will make you scholarly, but it also offers you enthusiasm to execute that knowledge. But along with enthusiasm, Prabhupada also helps us, Prabhupada books also helps us to understand where to put that enthusiasm. Okay, where, so where to put that enthusiasm? In temple construction, in deity worship, in cooking, Prabhupada says no, primary thing is preaching, fire of preaching, Prabhupada books have fire of preaching. And uh, Prabhupada books helps us to inspire us to preach, but then along with preaching, 
Prabhupada books also gives a sense of urgency in that preaching because you can keep on preaching, you know. But then you don't know like what to do with that preaching. You know? How fast should I go in that preaching? And so that Prabhupada books give a sense of urgency and mission. What should I achieve by preaching? What's my goal? What this preaching is to give me? Where, what's my target? That Prabhupada books help us to understand. And not just preaching, enthusiasm, urgency and mission. Um, devotees are generally preaching, they distribute books, they're enthusiastic. But we have, we have seen many devotees lack a deep philosophical understanding. They're not so deep. Because it's a busy life, you're doing this, 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 this. So Prabhupada books also offers us deep philosophy. You don't have to read this book, that book, that book, that book from market, from... Uh, to understand deep philosophy because Prabhupada books are simple. No, it will give you very deep philosophy. And not just deep philosophy, but also mellows and taste. Prabhupada books, if you read, you not, don't become dry. Because if you simply read philosophy, your heart becomes dry, no? Isn't it? So Prabhupada books offers us taste and mellows. Also of Vrindavan. And then, having said all this, Prabhupada books also give us warnings. Or four warnings and helps us understand uh, where we can go wrong, what can happen to us if we go like this. So if you're a new devotee, what are the obstacles which can come in devotion? If you're an advanced devotee, there are some warnings that you might get caught up in name, fame or whatever, you know. Prabhupada is giving all these warnings to help his disciples. But along with warnings, Prabhupada also gives great hope and blessings. That is there in Prabhupada books. So all these things are there in Prabhupada books. That is why Prabhupada says, my books are a complete package. A complete package. If you read my books, you get all these things. You get teachings, you get enthusiasm, preaching, sense of urgency and mission, deep philosophy, mellows, warnings and blessings of Prabhupada. Blessings are very important. You can make a project and a big plan, but if you don't have blessings, you'll not be able to finish it. You can't execute it properly. So I am going to give examples of each of them now. How Prabhupada books give us all these things from Prabhupada books. I'll quote from Prabhupada books now. All these things. So the first one is Srila Prabhupada books have at the essence of all previous acharyas. Now, so when we talk of previous acharyas, I am focusing on Gaudiya Vaishnava acharyas. Isn't it? I mean to say there are many paramparas also. But Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, they, especially Bhakt, Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta, Gaur Kishore Das Babaji and Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who are here. It, it also goes like this? Okay, good. Okay. So Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta, Gaur Kishore Das Babaji, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So these four Acharyas, these four Acharyas are called, are known as Vartaman Acharya. So, Acharyas are divided into two parts. Purvarti Acharya and Vartaman Acharya. So, Vartaman Acharya means present Acharyas. Purvarti Acharyas means previous Acharyas. So, these four are our present Acharya. Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta, Gaurakshavaji, Bhakti Yon Thakur. And previous Acharyas are uh, Vishwanath Chakradi Thakur, Narutam Das Thakur, Shad Goswamis. We read in Parampara, they are previous. And it is said, it is very important to understand Vartaman Acharya. Through them we can understand previous acharyas. Otherwise it's not possible. If we try to go to previous acharyas, just only previous acharyas, like Purvarti acharyas, and not Vartaman acharyas, then we can't understand them. So these Vartaman acharyas, they understood the books of their parampara, their spiritual masters. And they assimilated it and now they are giving to us. And Prabhupada gave the essence of all these Vartaman Acharyas and previous, everything. So, how did Prabhupada do that? How, how does Prabhupada books do that? Okay. This is Bhakti Vinod Thakur and this is from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Leela 9 chapter 51st verse. And Prabhupada in one statement of Popat, this is Popat. In one statement of that, Prabhupada summarizes entire philosophy of Bhagavad Gita. Oh, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, Thakur, sorry. So you can read his books, that's very nice. But 
but even if you don't make reading his books, if you simply understand this one statement and apply in your life, you can understand Prabh- Bhaktivinoda Thakur's teachings. You see, Prabhupada is such a genius. So, Prabhupada summarizes Bhaktivinoda Thakur's teachings in three points, in one statement. And that's how we should read Prabhupada's books, by the way. This is, I'm also showing you how to read. Every statement must be broken into various points. One statement is packed with knowledge. You might notice, you might not notice. That's another thing, why it is there. So this is Bhakti Thakur's teaching, the first, in, in, just in three points, that's all. So Prabhupada writes, Tear will fill his eyes, he will be unable to chant Mahamantra distinctly, and his heart will throb in ecstasy. See? This is Bhakti Thakur. Bhakti Thakur's whole life was focused on helping us to chant the holy names. Isn't it? That's Bhakti Thakur. Bhakti Thakur wrote the book, Bhajan Rehase, Harinam Chintamani. All his teachings were focused on chanting holy names. Sharnagati, you see, all holy names. In our special song book, all Bhakti Thakur is saying, uh, just holy, he's talking about holy names. Nama, Shuddha, Rasa, all these things. Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, that's also holy name. Nam Bina Arki Chunai, Chauda Bhuva Namaje. So, Bhakti Vinod Thakur talked of holy name, but not just of chanting of holy names. That was not his philosophy. That's not his teaching. The teaching was to get a taste in holy name. And there's a difference in that. Now, chanting holy names, everybody was talking at that time. All of us sampradayas were also talking. But Bhakti Vinod said, no, no, chanting holy name, that is okay. But my teachings will help you to understand how to get taste in chanting. And that, that is very different thing. No, like new devotees, they chant, but they don't have a taste. They generally chant because of fear, no? We generally, when we are new, we chant because of fear, fear of offense. We have to complete our rounds, otherwise there will be offense. Or if you don't chant with your concentration, uh, then there will be offense, no? It's all basically, inspiring factor is fear. Or maybe Guru said, so I have to complete 16 rounds. That's what happens with all of us. And that's okay. Be- beginning of devotional life is due to fear. There are just two words you have to remember in devotion. Fear and love. Generally people engage love in devotion, but they don't know how to engage fear. And if you, if you know that the trick to engage fear and love, devotion becomes very powerful. Whole Christianity, modern Christianity, they are talking about love, but not fear. And because of lack of fear, there is lack of respect. And because of lack of respect, love is simply a sentiment and not real love. That Prabhupada mentions in Narad Bhakti Sutra. Jarana Meva, Prabhupada says, comments on that. The show of love without a sentiment of respect is simply like, a, like lusty dealings between a boy and a girl. There's no value. No essential value. You see? So that's why fear is important. It helps, it helps us to generate sense of respect. Isn't it? And that's what Prabhupada writes in Extra Devotion. Otherwise, why this concept of offense? Why? To give us fear, no, don't do this. Why there is concept of Guru? To give us a fear. You know, if you don't do this, then he will be angry. And he is a pure devotee of Krishna. Then Krishna will be angry. You see the point? So, yes, we chant with fear, but then we have to advance ourselves and chant with a taste. There's, there's, that's a very separate thing. Nam Ruchi. That Bhakti Thakur says, no? Uh, Nam Ruchi. Where, where he uses this word in one of his song? He uses this word, Nam Ruchi. So that's Bhakti Prabhupada says. And how a taste in holy name? How do we know we have got taste in holy name? By these symptoms. When we have taste in holy name and we chant, there will be tears and eyes. Will be unable to chant the Mahamantra. So when you are unable to chant Mahamantra, that's perfection. <laughs> that's why if you complete the 16 rounds, you're not still perfect. <laughs> in one sense. If you can't finish your 16 rounds, then... Well, I mean to say not for everybody. <laughs> if you can't finish your 16 rounds, you're lazy. But if you can't finish your 16 rounds, um, but you're trying, whole day you're trying, but you can't chant because your heart, your throat chokes then this means you are nearing perfection. That's one way of looking at it. And his heart will throb in ecstasy. You see this very important Prabhupada statement. His heart will throb in ecstasy means 
the the taste of holy name is not just in your in your mind but it has it has overpowered your body and it is it is expressed now in physical form not just in mental form you see that kind of taste bhakti vinod thakur wants to give by chanting holy names that's a goal by the way and but the second point prabhupada says chetanya prabhu says that one should not imitate this now bhakti vinod thakur's second part of teaching was this yes this is the symptoms of taste of holy name naam ruchi you have to approach naam ruchi these are my teachings and if you follow this you get taste but then don't try to imitate these symptoms so his is 50% of teachings he was fighting against apasampradayas no aula baula gerat huna all these sorry sorry aula baula and then sakhi bheki and all these people so he says don't imitate this that is another point and third point is a devotee should long for the day to come when such symptoms of trance will automatically appear in his body third point is bhakti on thakur says when you chant okay fine you don't have a taste now we understand but you should long for the day when you will have a taste real taste in holy name with that desire we should chant you see you should not chant just to finish your rounds it will not help you you can chant for millions of lives nothing will happen bahu naam what said oh mm. no no bahu janma jadi kare shavana kirtan tabu to na paaye krishna pade prema than no and unless we put extraordinary efforts we are not going to achieve krishna bhakti santa said this it's not possible so okay fine don't put extraordinary efforts put at least some ordinary efforts you know nobody is asking for extraordinary at least chant 16 rounds nicely whenever you chant don't try to finish it sometimes it happens but not always no if you are very busy in service so you should long for the day when you will get taste in holy name it is said if you try to finish holy name holy name will finish you you know this <laughs> yeah, you will start committing offenses that's all holy name will detect what you are doing nonsense he is not fool krishna is not fool he can know what exactly what you are doing so uh, he might not get frustrated but slowly gradually if you don't improve he will get he is a person no he is not a machine if he loves you he can also hurt you for your benefit by the way just like a mother if a mother loves a child she can also hurt the child that's all so we should long for that day and with that longing we chant when that day will come when i will have taste in holy name and when the day will come when i will have trance you see prabhupad uses this word trance bhakti on thakur uses this word trance in his songs in trance in other words samadhi bhakti on thakur says in his in his last song of sharnagati in the 11th chapter and the song begins with uh, uh, krishna naam so have you read that song anybody sharnagati book last song krishna naam dhare kato bal bhakti on thakur says how much power holy name has that when it enters my ear my legs start trembling my heart starts throbbing i have no control on myself that is bhakti on thakur so our goal is to to get into trance because if you are not focused if you are not in samadhi trance means your thoughts your feelings and your words are in same same focus now our words are okay somewhere but feelings and thoughts are somewhere no feelings are going somewhere else thoughts are going somewhere else it's all but where you can achieve trance when all these three are in one focus our words our thoughts our words are connected to krishna our thoughts are connected to krishna and our feelings are connected to krishna and those things i'll talk in the next class the art of chanting i'll talk about that in details but that's the idea this is bhakti on thakur's teaching simple and this is god krishna das abhi prabhupad in in a room conversation with dr garson and some devotees in la 1975 prabhupad speaks this to some devotees prabhupad says and this is entire teaching of god krishna das abhi you might read god krishna abhi books no problem you can read you can not read in fact there is not much about him also about his teachings but this is the essence god krishna abhi said so when you are on spiritual platform there is no material nidra ahar vihar akadi vichitau then you conquer over even our prime necessities 
eating, sleeping, mating, defense. The prime necessities, the primary necessities, you don't require. You will sleep less, you will eat less, there is no need of mating, very less. So the lesser, lesser you become, that means spiritual. Bhakti parishanu bhava virakti anyata. Your spiritual advancement means you become disgusted, reluctant with this and no more. This is God Krishwarta Sabaji. God Sabaji, Sakshat Vairagya Murti. You know, we say that, no? Prabhupada, so many times in his letters and his books, Prabhupada says, this advancement in spiritual life can be known when your eating, sleeping will reduce. Isn't it? Prabhupada says, no? When it reduces, you are advancing. But automatically. That's one thing. Artificially, you can't do anything. And the, and the main thing is last line. Your spiritual advancement means you become reluctant and disgusted with this. We have to sleep, of course. You can't avoid it. At least, at least one, two hours. <laughs> you have to sleep. At least. But at the same time, when a devotee sleeps, he becomes disgusted with the fact, oh, I'm going to sleep, I'm wasting time. You can say you are engaging sleep in service of Krishna, but that's, <laughs> that's you can say that. But there's another perspective also, no? Yeah, we are engaging sleep in service of Krishna, but at the same time, we are wasting our time also. Isn't it? So we are engaging sleep in service of Krishna. Why? Because our body becomes fresh and then we serve Him in that way. But then, uh, in, the, but then in the ultimate sense, we, are, we just wasted six hours. Isn't it? In that six hours, you not only forgot Krishna, you forgot yourself. Such a deep ignorance. We forget ourselves. We forget everything about ourselves. Such a deep ignorance we go in. And Prabhupada says, that is... You see, if a devotee says, I am not an illusion, you can ask him, do you sleep? If he sleeps, you are an illusion, simple. <laughs> because at least, if you are sleeping for one hour, you're, at least for one hour you are an illusion. No, You don't know what's happening. You've forgotten yourself. So, uh, yeah, Srila Prabhupada, many times he even didn't, didn't sleep, no? Isn't it? Whole, the whole night he's translating and this and that and that. And when advanced devotees sleep, they, it's not like us, no? They, they dream of Krishna. That's all. They don't want to ignorance like us, although it seems like that. <laughs> you know, it's very different between them and us, no? So, that the idea is, Gokshur Dhavavaji's whole teaching is, that uh, that you should have such a taste in holy name, what Bhakti Thakur says, such taste in holy name and such taste on spiritual platform that you get disgusted with the material platform. That's the idea. That disgust has to be there. You are, you sleep, you eat, you do everything. Mahaprabhu is also doing these things, but we don't. We, but we don't have interest in these things. We don't like them. We like chanting holy names, but nevertheless, we have to do this. Because uh, this machine will stop, you know, it'll, it'll, this function will get destroyed. But that's okay. We just do for doing sake. So, so we do minimal, whatever is necessary we do to keep ourselves alive. And we spend our time in spiritual consciousness. And that's what is Gaur Krishwarta Swabhaji. The entire teaching of Bhakti Siddhanta is in these magazines. So, so, so have you heard this magazine, Gaudiya? Gaudiya magazines? Bhakti Santa used to publish Gaudiya magazines. They are in Bengali. They are like so, there's so many magazines. Like that, that show, show, showcases the, the books behind. It will all fill with Gaudiya magazines. That so big. So in those magazines, Bhakti Santa's teachings and his writings and his interviews are there. And they are in Bengali. So, but the point is, you can't read them even if you know not Bengali. Because his Bengali is very complex. <laughs> he starts a, he starts one sentence and it finishes on like that. Sent, uh, to to finish that sentence, you need a whole page. He starts and keeps on. There's no full stop. It goes on, goes on. So it's, Bengali is complex, and it Bengali is also also Sanskritized. Very modern Beng Bengali people they cannot read. You have read Gaudiya? You have Bengali. Yeah, mo modern Bengali, they, they can't really grasp that, you know, it's a very different thing. So, but, so, if you want to know Bhakti Santa, you have to read Gaudiya's. But you don't need to do that. 
because Prabhupada summarizes all his teachings in one verse, in one sentence, actually two sentences. This is from Elevation to Krishna Consciousness, chapter 2. And this is what Bhakti Santa has to say, that's all. Even if you don't read though his books, if you simply understand this sentence, you understand Bhakti Santa. So Bhakti Santa teachings are in two, 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 two points, that's all. The first point is even the cultivation of spiritual realization for one's own self-interest is unlawful and destructive. Now these two words I'll talk about, unlawful and destructive. When Prabhupada says something and uses a word, it has a meaning to that. So I am, by this I am also teaching you how to read Prabhupada books. You see the point? You have to divide in points, you have to focus on the words. And the second point is, the point is that all activities must be directed to satisfaction of Krishna and his service. This is from a small book, Elevation to Krishna Consciousness. Chapter 2, that's all, which we distribute on streets. And when that person will read, he will say, what is this? But that is the Sambham Bonam. Now what Prabhupada says, Bhakti, Prabhupada says, summarizing Bhakti Sandha teaching, even the cultivation of spiritual realization for one's own self-interest is unlawful and destructive. Even doing devotion for our own self-interest, that might be unlawful and destructive. Okay, let me ask you a question. What is the meaning of unlawful? Why does Prabhupada say unlawful? If you do devotion for your sense gratification, self-interest, you will harm yourself. The idea is this. And why Prabhupada says it is unlawful and destructive? What do you mean by unlawful? Oh, yeah, okay, fine. What's the term like? like so, this English, but then what's this so Sanskrit term? Okay, yeah, yeah, so, so why Prabhupada says it's unlawful? Why unlawful? It's a different word, no? Unlawful. You see, if you come to Krishna for your own happiness and satisfaction and peace, Prabhupada says that's unlawful. The idea is that. If you come to Krishna and you pray, Krishna, give me peace, that's unlawful. Not just unlawful, but destructive. Now I'll talk about that. So unlawful is, what is law called? Dharma. Unlawful is? Adharm. Prabhupada says that is adharm. If you come to Krishna for peace and happiness and satisfaction, you're not only out of devotion, but you're out of religion. You're out of religious principles. What to talk of devotion? Devotion is built on religious principles. But you're out of religion. You're irreligious. And that's a very big word. Because entire religion is based on just one word. Just one. That is selflessness. That's all. Any activity which carries this virtue of selflessness, that becomes religion. Any activity which carries the evil of selfishness, that becomes irreligion. That, that's all, if you, if you want to understand that. And that's what uh, actually Prabhupada also says, I'll quote afterwards. That is what is very important. Whole life of Socrates, he spent his life to decide what is religion, what is religion, what is virtue, what is evil. And he used to debate and this and this, people, people couldn't guess it. You know, because, because you know why? Because the same activity can be adharma, same activity can be dharma. Isn't it? So, for example, killing somebody is adharma. But Arjuna kills. And that's, his action is like, his action is, an, his action is in the book, which is, a, which is a prototype of dharma. Isn't it Bhagavad Gita? <laughs> It starts with killing. The book of Dharma, Gita, which is, it starts with killing. Now, what do you say about that? Same action becomes religion, religion. How by? Because ordinary killing is for selfishness, so it is a Dharma. Arjuna is killing not for selfishness, but for Krishna. It is selfless. So it becomes Dharma. You see? So it's unlawful. Doing devotion for one's self-interest, that's unlawful. Don't go to Krishna for and ask for peace and happiness. Don't even expect that. It will come itself, no problem. It's a side effect, by the way. By the way, happiness is a side effect of devotion. So if you, if, so if you take a medicine, you don't take a medicine for its side effect, no? That's crazy. One, uh, yeah, one, one, uh, Prabhupada, Prabhupada was in Mexico. I was hearing lecture. And then Prabhupada, Prabhupada was saying, so what's the goal of life? So one Mexican said, I just, he, was, he said, goal of life is humbleness. 
And then Prabhupada said to devotee, Prabhupada said, tell him, even a donkey is humble. <laughs> that's all. Prabhupada said, that's not the goal of life. Goal of life is not happiness. If goal of life is happiness, then birds are very happy, no? Flying in the air, it's so nice. We all want to fly in the air, no? They're so happy. A monkey is very happy. At least it looks happy. Going <laughs> and there. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> From one branch to another branch here. So, happiness is not the aim of life. Peace is not the aim of life. If you talk of peace, uh, the crane, you know crane? It stands on one leg. They're very peaceful, just standing for two, three hours, nothing. This is just meditating. Very peaceful, no problem. So, aim of life is to become selfless for Krishna. That's the idea. So, unlawful and destructive. This is very important. If we do sense gratification and if we come to Krishna for our self-interest, interest, we will harm ourselves. We can harm. It can be very destructive because we'll start doing offenses. Now, that's the idea, no? Okay. Okay. Everybody who comes to Krishna initially, they come with a motive, isn't it? A new person. He comes for peace, happiness, that's okay. Krishna forgives. Krishna understands he's a new person. He's a person, no? He understands, okay, he's a new, he doesn't have knowledge, fine. Come, he'll give mercy. But even five, six, seven, ten years, still after that you are praying to Krishna for peace, happiness, and you're looking for all that, Krishna will become very unhappy and he'll punish you. So that may be destructive, you know. So Prabhupada, these two words are very important, unlawful. Prabhupada uses such nice words, huh? And that's why Prabhupada books have a deep philosophy in them. So you have, to, you, have to, you have to dissect the statements and look at this. So this is one sentence. In one sentence, Bhakti Siddhanta's entire teaching. That's all, two points. Okay, in one sentence, Madhvacharya's entire teaching is there. Ava Sampradaya is connected to Madhva, no? So this is a letter on Srimad Bhagavatam, lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam. 1974, December 20, Madhva says, now you see, Madhva's point, whole teachings Prabhupada summarizes in four points. Just in one line, that too in lecture. He's speaking ordinarily. <coughs> but, his ordinary, but his ordinary words, like so-called ordinary words, he's speaking, that also carries a deep import. When a self-realized soul speaks, he doesn't speak like us. His every word carries a depth. Because those words are coming from depth. Our words are coming from throat. Their words are coming from soul. And what comes from throat? What happens? It goes to throat only. <laughs> so it will go to another ear and it will stop here. What comes from soul, it goes to soul. That's why Prabhupada's words touches the soul. No? It touches the soul. So, this is Madhva's teaching. You see, Prabhupada writes, it's a simple statement, but if you try to think about it, it's all teachings. As Purusha is an enjoyer, we try to become independent enjoyer. Now, the first point is, this is where Madhva's philosophy begins. As God is enjoyer, we are also enjoyer. That means, our enjoying propensity is coming from God. In other words, our free will, enjoying means free will. We have free will to enjoy, no? Our free will is dependent on the free will of God. That's where Madhva begins his philosophy. You see, Madhva has two, two fingers, no? Like this, you see there? Oh, actually, I can use this. You see these two fingers? One is big and one is short. It's coming there or what? Yeah, yeah, it comes, yeah, yeah, it comes there. So, two fingers. See, he holds like this. So, these fingers signify one, God is independent and we are dependent. It doesn't signify God and soul is different. Madhva says, I don't want to argue this, this is a useless point. Madhva said, no, this is crazy. Anybody who says soul and God is one, he's crazy. He's, I don't even want to talk to him. I don't want to listen and see his face. That's obvious. But he says, okay, this is God, this is soul and they are dependent. So, free, our free will is dependent on God. You imagine what that means? That means if Krishna wants, he can erase our free will. We have free will, no? You understand what's free will, all of you, isn't it? We can do whatever our choice, you know. He can erase our free will if he wants, but he doesn't do that. 
to let us use our will and learn how to use it in a proper way in a right direction if we don't have a free will we don't learn no isn't it now tell me one thing can krishna it is our free will what's the evidence of that are you understanding my question can he it is your free will it is in free will is a big thing no It's, you're gone you can't you can't do anything you're just practically dead no you can't you can't think freely you like a robot no then can he do that what's the evidence of that yeah speak the monday class you mentioned that how uh, this as a soul we still want to enjoy but then uh, krishna uh, you okay, know forget it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no it's a simple answer what's the evidence 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 means a physical evidence no like it's not some intellectual stuff evidence is not logic in court of law evidence is something you can see it's not logic you see evidence is pratyaksh not anuman yeah yeah speak quick so oh. for the pure devotees case they are completely surrendered to krishna no no like wait wait wait, 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 wait no no wait evidence of a raising free will just in one word i want bas marki ne bhagavat dharma bhai ab bhai in court judges ask what is evidence he killed him this knife chalo bhai ho gaya jail bas <laughs> there's no logic then no logic logic you have to apply when there's no evidence oh he is debating with that other lawyer he is saying he is saying he is saying that and he says see this knife is there there is his blood and we did genetic analysis the same dna chalo get lost finish and that's very important question what is that oh yeah yeah just just speak that's okay so uh, is animal life uh, two words animal life i mean Yeah. <laughs> no no what i i think <laughs> no 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 i i think animal yeah. life is not a, a evidence of raising free will no animals also have free will but they then they're not a of free will limited but they have free will yeah, talking about raising free will hmm it's a very different take okay if you don't know that's fine the evidence you get evidence daily by the way when you sleep at night deep sleep is evidence of erasing your free will that's all every day krishna erases your free will for 6 hours continuous <laughs> not just your free will but your i he erases your sense of i which we have so much proud i i am deciding i am doing this i am doing this even in devotion everything is revolving around i isn't it so we come to krishna okay kartik damodar ashtakam why you are doing because because you will get lot of benefits you know if you if you chant one round it will become what's that we will get millions of rounds benefits okay it comes to i okay i okay fine okay fine if, if i chant this stotra it will give me it will give me protection it all comes to that i and this krishna raises okay finish krishna says you don't know how to use it i'll raise it that's all either use it properly or i'll erase it so krishna says krishna gives that deep sleep krishna says about that uh and that is death death is permanent erase of your eye you're finished but then but then of course eye doesn't die we are not maya vadis it gets erased but then it again comes back in the next body isn't it so krishna can do that krishna can permanently erase your eye finish you are in black hole so free will is dependent on on krishna that's where madhava starts his philosophy by the way but second point is we misuse that free will isn't it we become independent enjoyer that, that that's a point we don't understand our free will is dependent on krishna and we start misusing our free will and because of that third point madhava says uh because of independent enjoyer of this material world and baffled one after another one after another one after another baffled and at last finally baffled so when we try to independently enjoy this material world we start become frustrated no isn't it that that we know you enjoy without krishna you become frustrated 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 that's what is third point of madhava if you try to be independent you will suffer 
and finally Prabhupada says, then he wants to become Supreme Purusha, I am God. He tries to enjoy, he doesn't get enjoyment. He tries this, he tries that, he tries that, ultimately frustration, frustration, frustration. Finally he says, okay, let me try to become God, then I will not get frustrated. Maybe. Let's try that out. And that is Mayavad. So, you see, Madhva says, Mayavad is not born of a philosophy. Mayavad is born of frustration. And Prabhupada mentions in Bhagavad Gita, with Raga, Bhaya, Kuroda, you see, in that Papa, Prabhupada says, Mayavad is born of bhai, fear, and frustration. When a person becomes frustrated, life after life, enjoying, 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 he, he wants to enjoy, he makes plans, but it gets destroyed, he makes plans, it gets destroyed, and he says, now I want to become like God, and I want to have supreme power, so that my plans will never become frustrated. And that is Hiranyakashipu. So Hiranyakashipu was a big Mayavadi, by the way. So Mayavad is born of sense, gross enjoyment, and frustration. This is what Madhva's analysis is. All these Shankara people, these Mayavadis used to come and they used to say, we are Jnanis. Madhva used to say, you are frustrated people, that's all, not Jnanis. <laughs> you are crazy frustrated people. You are not Jnanis, that's all. You see, there is a difference now. How beautifully Prabhupada summarizes Madhva's philosophy. It's just in lecture, he's speaking, random, he's not thinking, speaking. This shows how much Prabhupada is realized. And this shows how much important it is to read Prabhupada's books and read his lectures. Lectures are transcribed also, no? And conversations. Otherwise, you'll miss many things. Okay. So, Prabhupada's books not only give a summary of or essence of all the philosophy, Prabhupada gives, Prabhupada's books also gives us practical insight. It is not just philosophy Prabhupada gives. He doesn't want to make you bookworm or armchair philosopher. Isn't it like that, no? We read all philosophy, all books and you sit and, okay, this is philosophy. Prabhupada gives practical insight. Not just philosophy, but application. Not just philosophy, philosophy but action. And Prabhupada says here, in one of his letters, 1971, Prabhupada says, if you can make good propaganda, then everyone will become attracted to Krishna consciousness. That is our mission. There is no Acharya who has used this word propaganda. No. Every Acharya has used the word preaching. Prachar. Or, or maybe giving knowledge, jnana, you know, all these words. No Acharya has used this word propaganda. Prabhupada uses the word propaganda. Now, what's the difference between preaching and propaganda? What's the difference between preaching? Prabhupada said, you can make, uh, you can do nice preaching, then everyone will be attracted to Krishna. Because says, no, Prabhupada doesn't say that. Prabhupada says, do good propaganda. What's the difference between propaganda and preaching? Quick, I want quick answers, there's no time. So, that's why. You don't know? Come on. Prabhupada has used the word very often, propaganda. You know this, no? In his books. Probably you might not notice that. Now, there's a difference between propaganda and preaching. Preaching is this, what I'm doing. But propaganda is, Prabhupada said one, philosophy is for classes, kirtan is for masses. Now, Propaganda it requires creative ideas to, to propagate preaching. There's a difference. Preaching is you giving knowledge in the class. Propaganda is you, you develop ideas to spread that knowledge. To spread preaching, propaganda is required. You see the point? Now, and, and all these foreign disciples, they were very good at propaganda. All these, you know, Prabhupada's early disciples. Like uh, that classical example I give that uh, Prabhupada went to Bombay and he did Pandal program. So there were around 10,000 people attending, no, every day in Bombay. Now they advertised how they, how they did propaganda. Uh, they put big balloons on the buildings, skyscrapers. That's a very good system. I, I mean to say, I mean to say, so, so even today we don't use that technique, you know, balloons. So they put big balloons, so a whole Bombay could see. And, and they put printed flyers and they were not going door to door to give flyers. They, they went on the building skyscrapers and just put it in air. And whole Bombay was full of flyers and they were falling on the head and people were seeing what's this and everybody knew. 
that's the propaganda so propaganda needs creativity and propaganda needs intelligence more than that creativity and courage that's one thing two things creativity and courage preaching might not need this isn't it you can apply in preaching creativity courage yeah courage courage also you can say if you're going to some atheist and trying to preach him but propaganda is uh, but preaching can be without that also just like now what's creativity i'm sitting you are listening that's all nothing big you know <laughs> little creativity in ppt that's all but and courage uh, th there's no need of courage you know anybody can come and speak in temple no problem but propaganda is different thing you you understand propaganda focused on propaganda propaganda said that that is propaganda is a mission not just preaching and that probably uh, we have forgotten and that is why uh, forgot not it's it's lessened to many much degree that is why our movement is not is not growing as much as it should no because we are not doing propaganda we are not doing most of us are sitting in temples and that's it and okay some kind of book we are doing book distribution yes go in the restaurant temples are coming up but this word is very different this word means you have to do something out of the box you, you see that something very, this all these hippies were doing like that prabhupad did like that we went to a park sat and started that's a moment started no that was a good propaganda if you take if if if, if you consider just uh, just alone prabhupad you know he is just trying to do something so that is practical insight prabhupad is giving very practical now prabhupad books this is another practical insight prabhupad gives this is this i like a lot uh, this is from actually uh, never this quotation comes here yeah. by anyway uh, so this is from one of the lectures and prabhupad says personal realization does not mean that one should out of vanity attempt to show one's own learning but trying to surpass previous acharya that's okay he must have full confidence in previous acharyas at the same time he must realize the subject matter so nicely that he can present the matter for particular circumstance in a suitable manner the original purpose of the text must be maintained no obscure meaning should be screwed out of it yet it should be presented in an interesting manner for the understanding of the audience this yellow things have shifted sorry for that they shifted you know it should not be here first point first point is interesting second point is understanding it goes like that so prabhupada says this is called realization now this is a very different kind of definition of realization if you read any acharya what is definition of realization many people will say realization means a paroksh gyan if you see madhva madhva says it is a paroksh gyan if you see ramanuja he says realization means uh, nididhyasanam maximum or sakshatkar if you see if you see vallabhachare what is realization he defines realization as as uh, aprakrit gyan something or if you see, if you go to christianity they say realization means revelation a real realization no? it gets revealed but prabhupad gives a very practical definition of realization what is realization if you can present the subject matter in a very interesting and understandable way two things this means you are realized so you can know a person is realized or not if you can present his subject matter in an interesting way and in a way that a person understands you know why because you can't create interest unless you don't have interest you can't do that what you don't have you can't give you can give points from folio but if you don't if you if you're not interested in your own points which you have just written you can't create interest and if you don't understand you can't make others understand it's impossible and interesting and this interest and understanding only comes when you have understood the subject matter when you have when you that subject matter and you are one isn't it and that is called realization and this okay fine now here's a question from where prabhupada is writing this like it's a speculation or what this definition of realization what is this Huh? From experience and from shastras. Yeah, fear from shastras. That's the idea. That I know from shastras and experience. But Prabhupada is not speculating. Prabhupada is speaking from somewhere. From where he is speaking? The definition of realization. He should present in an interesting and understanding way, manner. That is why you know, if you want to know a person who is realized or not, 
he can know only when he starts preaching a fool is not known until he opens his mouth no <laughs> he looks wise so people who don't preach uh, they they can you can never know whether they realized or not and they can't even help others to become realized because they don't know they don't want to preach they do, they can't understand the subject matter if you understand the subject matter you will want to share with others no if you if you get interested in the subject matter you want yes others should know so realization means preaching in a, in a way which is interesting and understanding you see the point now now which is this verse prabhupad you have to see the evidence because prabhupad doesn't speak it is everything is as it is prabhupad doesn't write from his mind he's not a writer just a mundane writer and you know this you know this verse but like karna you have forgotten how to apply it <laughs> what he says preaches um no, gives no, this no 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 that's not the verse you need two words interesting and understanding that's the idea you know it but you don't know where to apply and that means you're not realized because if you realized you would have known where to apply this but you don't know how to apply you see the point can you repeat the question question is prabhu pas says the subject matter should be presented in interesting and understanding manner that is called realization there is a definition of realization from where prabhu pas is getting this definition which verse for this you have to read books of prabhu pas yeah in a very with a open mind otherwise you don't get this otherwise you don't if you try to cram it you don't get this okay i should i tell yes sir or it's a homework no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah next time only otherwise uh, the people don't think you know okay so this is the simple words mat chit mat katha prana kathyanta swam nityam tu shanti cha these two words to shanti cha ramanti cha prabhupa says my devotees who are pure devotees they discuss among themselves and to shanti means satisfaction prabhupa translates you get satisfied when you understand something fully isn't it i understood so i am satisfied and ramanti means pleasure you get pleasure in something when you when it that's interesting so prabhupa says they discuss with each other in a interesting way and a an understanding way simple that's the word to shanti means in understanding and ramanti means interesting they have understanding of that they get satisfied they get interest they get pleasure and kathyantas cha mam nityam bodhyanta parasparam and they express them when they discuss they present it in understanding and interesting way. see it's from bhagavad gita 109 so is it that's a word No, anything among devotees, devotees to masses, whatever. But this is, it is both. Even you are all devotees, no. So I am presenting in a little understanding and interesting manner, no. Somewhat, <laughs> otherwise you would have slept. <laughs> and normal people also. Mm. But the level differs. That's all. The concept principle doesn't differ. Principle has to be the same. Comp- level of un- level might differ. Level one, level two. Okay, this is this is called practical insight, practical insight of definitions. Prabhupada doesn't give theoretical definitions. Prabhupada always likes to give practical definitions, and this is from one of the lectures. Simple. Prabhupada books just doesn't have just a practical insights, but also have enthusiasm, irresistible enthusiasm. He gives insights, and then he says, "Do it now." don't just keep it to yourself enthusiasm to share it prabhupa says in shrimad bhagavatam purport devotee satis devotee is never satisfied thinking this is a limit of my devotional service the more he engages in the service of the lord the more service he wants to give that is why it is said there is no sunday in krishna consciousness you can't relax you can't say i have done so much service now i'll relax that's the point where illusion will catch you 
we can't think of relaxation. No. We have to be on our toes. And Prabhupada says, in, this is one of the lecture. In this is nice. In material condition life, you can see from back. In material con if you can't see, you can turn your <laughs> back. People can see in the back. In the material condition life, your aim is how to satisfy your senses. And Krishna consciousness means you have to work in the same spirit, same vigor. We have to satisfy Krishna. It's a beautiful line. Prabhupada says, just like you were working like mad dogs in the material world, with same spirit you have to walk here. So in material world we plan, we do this, we do that, we do that. Same thing you have to do in Krishna consciousness. That is spiritual life. Not that you have to become lazy fellow. Prabhupada uses this word, lazy. Lazy fellow. Krishna consciousness means, as Krishna instructs, you must be very, very busy 24 hours. That is Krishna consciousness, not to become a lazy fellow and eat and sleep and no. That's not what Prabhupada wanted. We have to be busy. That's what Prabhupada says. You have knowledge, you have books, you have enthusiasm, you have insight. Now do it. That is what is enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is action in, in Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada defines enthusiasm like that, no? Intelligence in Krishna consciousness, isn't it? in act of instruction and intelligence Prabhupada defines in Buddhi Yoga as action in Krishna consciousness. So enthusiasm is action. If you say I am very enthusiastic, don't do anything. What's the meaning of that? That's why Prabhupada said do it. Do it. Don't just keep on thinking. Don't do that. So Prabhupada forces us to do something and not only enthusiasm, Prabhupada helps us to understand where to apply that enthusiasm because we can apply enthusiasm in so many things and miss the whole point. Prabhupada says, no, don't apply enthusiasm in, oh, don't apply enth whole enthusiasm in, in prasadam. That's not the point. Whole enthusiasm in making temples. No, that's not the point. Enthusiasm should be applied for preaching. These are the tools to preach. That way we have to look. look. Not in itself. This is not in itself everything, no? Isn't it? So enthusiasm should be applied in preaching. And Prabhupada says, Prabhupada defines, Prabhupada says, yeah, Prabhupada says, preaching must be a fight in morning walk. So Prabhupada says, yes, you should be enthusiastic, but not enthusiastic to love, but to fight. That's what Prabhupada, Prabhupada was not a saint, by the way. Prabhupada was a warrior. Senapati? We heard that. What's that? Senapati. Warrior, no? It's not my speculation, <laughs> it's there. You know that. He, you see the point, he brought a message of love, but that love is expressed as a fight. That's the point. You have to fight against what opposes Krishna, we oppose that. So that's why Prabhupada said, you challenge scientists, you challenge these materialistic people, you do this. Uh, Prabhupada says, you defeat them. Prabhupada says, you you show them that they are wrong. You know, Prabhupada, and Prabhupada uses this word, rascal scientist and this and that. Prabhupada says, they're stupid. They're so that's what enthusiasm, we need enthusiasm to fight, not just to love. That's a very different take. Very different take. We have, Prabhupada in his humbleness, he said, now, uh, so we have a, one, uh, so one latest lecture of Prabhupada, it's released now new lectures. One of the lectures Prabhupada said, uh, in his last days, Prabhupada in humbleness, he said, I tried so hard, but I failed to stop the waves of Kali Yoga. Prabhupada said, we failed. Prabhupada said, our mission failed. We couldn't stop Kali Yoga. Prabhupada said that. So that, that Maya is, and Kali Yoga is, is advancing very fast. If you want to stop it, you have to be like a warrior. Not just like a stand, bless, love, no, that's okay. But along with that, this is more important. That's what Prabhupada's message is, yes. You have to stop them, somehow. Stop them, otherwise people, will, innocent people get destroyed, you know. What do you do? Whom you will love? There's no one. <laughs> they will take everybody. That's all. So fire of preaching. Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada says one of his letters to, oh, this I told before, by the way. 
Prabhupada's letters are very inspiring. Prabhupada says, this 1970, it was 1970 actually. Prabhupada says, please accept my humble obeisances. I beg to acknowledge the receipt of your kind letter, dated 24 June 1970. I'm very glad to learn that your last responsibilities in family affairs are now discharged. Your two daughters are now married. Now in this ripe old age, you can devote yourself to prospering in Krishna conscious movement all over the world. <laughs> this like, person who's got this letter, he might be like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to go to Vrindavan now and do my bhajan, Prabhupada is saying, now you should do that. This is Prabhupada's books. If you read any other book of any other acharya, Vishwanath, Narutam Das Thakur, Rupa Goswami, you will not get this fire of preaching. That is why many people are reading those books and sitting in Vrindavan. All these people who start reading, without reading Prabhupada's books, if you read those books, it will harm you. We don't say you don't read these books, but first Prabhupada's books, you have to read those books through the vision of Prabhupada. And even if you don't read the, those books, you don't lose anything because everything is there in his books. That's the idea. If you read, okay, fine. But first this. And I've seen many people who read those books but don't read Prabhupada books like in other, like in Gaudiamat and other also. Uh, so, so I don't say there are no good, very nice people, devotees there. But most of the trend have gone down. They can't understand what is exactly. They don't have enthusiasm to preach. It doesn't happen like that. I've seen many scholars. Jiva Goswami Shat Sandar, they know left and right, but no enthusiasm for preaching, nothing. I've seen that. No practical insight. All scholarly Sanskrit words here and there, and you can't understand any damn thing, you're going to change your life. Doesn't happen like that. Prabhupada gives fire of preaching. Prabhupada books also gives a sense of urgency and mission. Prabhupada doesn't say keep on preaching. Prabhupada says you have to bring an effect. It's an urgent thing. Okay, I'll preach, I'll do propaganda and I'll, okay, fine, nicely go. No, it's, it is urgency and a mission. This is Bhagavad Gita 9, chapter 30th, verse purport. Prabhupada says, devotional service is more or less a declaration of war against illusory energy. This is preaching. Preaching means we have declared a war against this civilization. That's all. And uh, so, uh, so I think yesterday or day before yesterday, I gave a lecture how Mahaprabhu's movement is about revolt. Isn't If you have seen that. Mahaprabhu is talking about revolt. And that was his mission. A revolt against society. And that is, it's a, such a nice word. Declaration of war. That is our mission. And in war, either you do or die. There are two options. In war, if you relax, what's going to happen? You're dead. That's all, you're dead. You're dead at that moment. You can't afford to relax. That's what is Prabhupada books giving us. Prabhupada books not only give preaching, practical insight, enthusiasm, and I was telling, you know, like in a moment, many people are not so deep philosophically. At least I have not noted my personal thing. Because there are so many things, no preaching and this and that and that and that and that and that. And that. So, they read Prabhupada books, but then not in a depth, or people don't read Prabhupada books. So, Prabhupada books, if you read, you'll get a deep philosophy also. There's action and philosophy. You see both. So, this is from, uh, from one of the lectures of Prabhupada. And Prabhupada says, uh, now this is simple, but you may not have noted this. As spirit soul, we have got our original sense, but that sense are now covered by this material contamination. Just like my senses, my hand burns during fever. But when the fever is moved or removed, when I get free from fever, then I feel nice. See? Simple. When the fever comes down, we feel nice. Similarly, we have got our senses. When we are freed from material contamination, we have got a proper use of senses and enjoyment. This is a typical example, no? <coughs> Prabhupada says, when fever reduces, you feel nice. When material fever reduces, you come in your constitutional position. Simple point. But it's a very deep philosophy and this is technically called as Swataha Praman. Self-evident truth. This is one word on which whole Madhva's philosophy revolves. Swataha Praman. And that's what Prabhupada says. Krishna consciousness, you don't need any certificate. Prabhupada says, no. you know yourself. So for example, uh, so Madhva gives example of Swataha Praman. Like hunger is Swataha Praman, no? Self-evident truth. If you feel hungry, you're confirmed you're hungry. You don't need a confirmation. You don't need a confirmation to prove yourself you're hungry. Praman comes with hunger. You see the point? 
You feel hungry and you know. You feel sleepy, you know. You feel thirsty, you know. You don't need a proof. You don't need to prove yourself, I am feeling hungry. So, knowledge and proof comes together. That is called Sataha Praman. You understand? Knowledge of hunger comes and proof also comes. I am hungry, yeah. Because it's in your experience. Krishna consciousness is Sataha Praman. Prabhupada is giving that example. When material fever goes down, our Krishna consciousness appears. Knowledge of Krishna consciousness appears and you don't need proof of anybody. You know you are Krishna consciousness within yourself. That's why Prabhupada says you don't need any certificate from anybody. If you are pure, if you are becoming pure, you will know within yourself you are becoming pure. If you are becoming contaminated, you know within yourself you are becoming contaminated. If you are genuine and sincere. That's Swatha Praman. Uh, they, they, uh, this, is, this is another deep philosophy Prabhupada gives in lecture, one of the lectures. Very deep philosophy. Whole Vedas are based on this sutra. Yatha Andam, Tatha Pindam. You know Andam? Andam means universe, like egg. Pindam means body. Whatever is there in cosmos, that is there in your body. And Prabhupada says in one of the lectures, simply this material cosmic manifestation is working very nicely. Sun is rising, moon is rising, seasons change, air is blowing, the light is there, heat is there. Why? Because there is big consciousness. And that small consciousness in your body and my body keeping this body fit. Similarly, there is another greater consciousness which is keeping this material what fit and working in order. You see? So, yatha andam, tatha pindam. So whole material universe is like a body. Just like we have a body and soul. And a soul is making a body work. Similarly, this whole universe is like a body. And the soul of this universe is God. So whatever is there, it is there here. You see, it's a replication. And then it goes to the cells. Similarly, the cells, nucleus and electrons. So this whole universe is like a hologram, you know. It goes in layers. It's whole. Om Purnamada Purnamada. That concept Prabhupada is giving. It's a very important concept for, for Ayurveda. Yatha Andam Tatha Pindam. So you see such deep philosophy in simple words. Prabhupada also gives not just deep philosophy but um, what's happening? But discussions on mellows and taste. Prabhupada books will not dry your heart. You know, people say, no, Prabhupada books are so simple our heart becomes dry. No. Prabhupada gives vision and the means to attain that vision. See, Prabhupada says in elevation to Krishna consciousness, now people say, Iskon, no, we leave, we'll go to Gaudiyamath and Radha Kund and this because they're talking about Radha. You don't talk about Radha. Prabhupada is talking about Radha in small book. We should be more interested in worshipping Radha Rani, see. Simple. However fallen we may be, if somehow or the other we can please her, we can very easily understand Krishna. This is what whole philosophy of Radha Kund is. But people don't read Prabhupada books and they say, no, no, Prabhupada doesn't mention about Radha Rani and this Prabhupada mentions. But uniqueness in Prabhupada is, Prabhupada also defines what you mean by worshipping Radha Rani. Worshipping Radha Rani doesn't mean simple saying Radhe Radhe. Krishna doesn't lie. Okay, fine. You're saying Radhe Radhe, that's okay. But, but, but you have to live up to what you say. So Prabhupada says, a philosophy is above all things, just like we prescribe our students to elicit, elicit sex, no illicit sex, no meditating, no intoxication, no gambling, but they're not ends in themselves. The real end is how to serve Krishna and sacrifice everything for him. This is one of a letter, and then Prabhupada says after in the letter, this is Radha. So how to, how to worship Radha? Yeah, we are interested in worshipping Radha more than Krishna, but how to worship her? By saying Radha Radha? No. By serving and sacrificing for Krishna. That is Radha. So, so worshipping Radha means following her, isn't it? Following Radha means doing what, what she is doing in our capacity. What she is doing, she is serving Krishna and sacrificing everything for him. Now, please note, we all serve Krishna, but a level of sacrifice is different, no? And that makes everybody of us at different level. Prabhupada served Krishna, I served Krishna, you served Krishna, everybody served Krishna, but Prabhupada was the most dear to Krishna because he sacrificed for him. The more the sacrifice, the more dear you are. Otherwise, service, everybody is doing. But the, within that service, sacrifice should be there. So, so anybody can quickly tell from where Prabhupada gets these two words, service and sacrifice. From which words? Prabhupada gets these two words, service and sacrifice. 
वर्स वर्स नहीं नहीं कर्म करो फल की इच्छा तो उसमें का सेक्रीफाइस कहाँ है नो 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 यू कैन से या मे बी टू सर्टन एक्सटेंट बट इट्स नॉट बट बट दैट वर्स डजन मैंशन यू शुड डू फॉर कृष्णा दैट इज नॉट वॉज दैट इज अ प्रिंसिपल सर्व एंड सेक्रीफाइस फॉर कृष्णा ओके क्विक आई एम डिस्ट गोइंग टू फिनिश नो भोक्ता राम अगे तप साम सर्व लोक महेश्वरम भोक्ता राम मीन्स ही इज अ एंजॉयर यज्ञ मीन्स सेक्रीफाइस तप साम मीन्स सर्विस सर इन डिवोशनल लाइफ सर्विस इज अ तपस्या एंड यज्ञ मीन्स सेक्रीफाइस सिंपल सो देर इज राधा इन गीता दिस वर्स टॉक्स अबाउट राधा इफ यू रियली थिंक अबाउट इट भोक्ता राम ही इंजॉय इज राधा Why? Because she is having sacrifice and service. So Gita also talks about Radha. It's not that Gita is not talking about Radha, but but in a hidden way. Okay, Prabhupada books also give a benevolent warnings. Now I'm going quickly. Prabhupada says this is a lecture and this is very important. Note this: Shri Madhavadam 1.13.15, Geneva, June 4, 1974. Prabhupada says these twelve men are authorized to preach Krishna consciousness, so we have to follow. Mahajan Yoga Dasa Pantha. Therefore, we have created this GBC. So they should be very responsible men. Otherwise, they will be punished. Prabhupada gives warning to GBCs also. They will be punished to become a Shudra. Although Yamraj is a GBC, Prabhupada says <laughs> Yamraj is a GBC. But he made a little mistake. We know that past time, no? Yamraj made a mistake and then he became Pidur Shudra. The whole past time, I am not going into that. He was punished to become Shudra. So those who are GBC, they should be very, very careful to administer business of his con. Otherwise, they will be punished. As the post is very great. Similarly, the punishment is also very great. Prabhupada doesn't shy away saying something about GBC. You can be GBC, you can be sannyasi, you can be guru. But if you are not careful, you can fall down. Anybody can fall down. Even Brahma fell down. and prabhupad gives a four warning so that they should they should be more careful than all of us as the post is great punishment is great prabhupad also warns his new devotees not just dbcs all devotees connected to krishna conscious movement must read all the books that have been translated this is in madhya leela chaitanya charita purport it's in book it's not in lecture and not in letter so that you can say it is contextual it is there for everybody prabhupad says all books means all books you can't delete prabhupad's instructions Chaitanya Mita Bhagavatam Bhagavata Adas. Otherwise, after some time, they'll simply eat, sleep, and fall down. Thus, they will miss opportunity to attain eternal blissful life of transcendental pleasure. See, Prabhupada gives warnings to book distributors also. Now, this is San Jose is a very big center for book distribution. That's very nice. We all know. But Prabhupada warns in lecture 972. Prabhupada says, of all these books, if we have got so many books, simply we make arrangement for selling, not for understanding. Then it will simply be materialistic. Both things must go on. Bhakti Santa used to say, "We are not here to become salesmen." So yeah, we have to distribute books. Plus, please understand that. Understand. If you understand, you will you will distribute more, with more enthusiasm. Now the point is so. But here we have to understand. If 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 a new devotee is coming, and if he distribute books, he will get all mercy of Krishna because it is not expected that he will read all books one day. But Prabhupada is saying this. statement specifically for people who are many years in krishna consciousness now you are there is 6 7 8 8 years still you are not reading and simply distributing then it becomes materialistic you see the point it, it there's a different take there and prabhupad gives warnings and then prabhupad gives great hope and blessings also in his book not just warnings prabhupad gives blessings i have given you all the guidance and hints in his one of his letter guidance means how to practice devotion hints means how to propagate and do management it is right all in my books now it is up to you please keep our principles firmly and everything will come out successful this is from letter to mukund hong kong was february 1974 everything is in my books that's where prabhupada says i shall never die i shall forever live in my books <coughs> hari krishna shila prabhupad ki jai thank you very much any questions and you can ask yeah mm. hari krishna prabhu yeah amazing lecture and very deep insights uh the question is uh so you said fight and fight the concept of fight is really attractive yeah. uh the thing is we always see fight among devotees on which tool to be used yeah that's the point he prabhu says fight outside the temple fight inside the temple <laughs> fight with wrong conceptions 
uh, okay before i answer you let me just tell you these are two pen drives with me not two like many of them not just two but these are english and hindi lectures last year i guess you might have taken some but these are different in this pen drive what i did i put things systematically like whole bhagavad gita is there nectar of devotion nectar of instruction so that you can understand no like all these seminars are there so if you want these pen drives they are both english and hindi lectures both different if you want you can have if you don't have cash i can also swipe the card for you and these are the books i think devotees have many devotees have taken but those who have taken you can take these books whatever i spoke in this in the, whatever i am speaking in this seminars that's in this book my dear efforts but you have to read this book slowly otherwise it's difficult to understand but it's there my dear efforts and there's one more book crazy ideas you can have a look is talking about many other questions you might have face in preaching you can argue with them in that crazy ideas i have i have given arguments from western philosophy indian philosophy not just is our books so it gives you a broad perspective okay having said that so you are fighting not with it well any fighting whatever works <laughs> use that in fighting just have to defeat the enemy if you are able to make others devotees and and defeat their wrong conception that's the best but the best thing is knowledge and philosophy otherwise will not be able to go much far you know like all these tools are there book distribution this and this and that that's very nice book distribution is a big tool you know who no god knows you know who reads and when they read and they become devotees we know all stories so that's one of the tool govinda restaurant that's also for by prashada many people became devotees and by by philosophy and lectures so any what works do that yeah but you should know all the tools that's the idea <laughs> because when the point comes of to using something else if the enemy shoots something and you don't know you're dead so warrior knows all tools but he might use some tool at some point but you should be expert in everything not that you expert in one thing and that's why prabhupada says if you are simply distributing books not understanding then it becomes materialistic after some time not initially after some time yeah mata ji so prabhu um the first point that you said that um it has to be no this doing devotional service for self interest is destructive yeah, and un unlawful yeah right but um, mm. even in bhagavatam prayers if you see at the end of the verses it say that you say this prayer you'll get this you'll get that no but yeah, i understand right? even bhagavatam says sometimes like ajendra mok says if you stand this you will not get bad dreams kaliya says that past time if you think about this you'll not get fear of snakes but that vyasadev has personally done why to make you understand don't do this because i did this mistake in other puranas and my guru narad muni he chastised me why did you like give so so this is technique or this is technically called as phala shruti so every pair if you do this you will get this if you do this you will get sun vyasadev says i did this in all puranas and narad muni says see people will forget prayers and start their mind will be in this So you have to get rid of all this. Bhagavatam is Amal Puran. There is no kind of impurity. So Vyasa Dev writes that to make us understand: don't fall in this kind of trap. He is not saying don't do this. He is saying don't do this. That's the idea. There. Yeah. Sorry, I am not understanding your logic. Because how do you how do you say that? How do we uh, see through commentaries? Through commentaries of acharyas. Oh, so for the Farashruti verses, we have to read what Prabhupad says. and not take the literal uh, meaning of what yeah prabhupa says these phala shrutis are put in bhagavatam to help us understand that these kind of things you will find in other scriptures it might confuse you don't focus on phala shruti that is why some examples are given no if you write a book and so you give example in that of wrong things also and then you say don't do this like uh, so so typical example uh, typical example is there's one shastra kama sutra kama sutra in america it's famous you know like they but kama sutra this this rishi vatsa and rishi he wrote he wrote the, the, like this 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 and then in the end he wrote i am writing this to tell you don't do this 
This is wrong, this is sinful. <laughs> you see the point? So that's why Rishi is something sometimes right and and so many times Vyasadev says, Akama Sarva Kama Va Moksha Kama Vadaradi Tivrena Bhakti Yogena. Whatever you have, do devotion. So an intelligent person will understand, oh, this is written to help us understand, don't do this. People who have not understood Bhagavatam, they will get confused. And this is a sign they didn't understand Bhagavatam. So it's a puzzle. Sometimes we have a puzzle, no? Okay, to test whether he has understood or not. That's a puzzle put there. So we understand that it's destructive from the sense that we don't get back, go back to Godhead. So it's destructive for our spiritual progress. Offenses, but, we do offenses. We but why is it unlawful? What, what is the law and why is it unlawful? Unlawful because if you do anything for self-interest, that is adharma. Adharma is, foundation of adharma is self-interest. Even if devotion is done for self-interest, that is adharma. It will give you sins and not benefit. You see the point? That is why. Did you understand? I understand, but it's really painful because is, yeah. we don't we don't <laughs> get inspiration other than I. So no, why that whole devotion process? No. <laughs> yeah, but if, if if we don't get anything, we don't get inspiration to do anything. Yeah. But that is materialistic. That's what we have to change our mind. If Krishna gets something, we are inspired. That is devotion. If we get something, it does, it doesn't. It's devotion is not about us. Devotion is about Krishna. Even if we go to hell, doesn't matter. That is pure devotion. That's Mahaprabhu's gift. So, of course, you don't get inspired. So, new, when, when people are new, of course, they'll be thinking about themselves. But that's not the gift of Mahaprabhu. It, it, so, 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 if they like to stick to this principle, then they'll not get anything in his con. Mahaprabhu came to give a gift of pure love. That is difficult to digest. But Mahaprabhu is giving the gift and also the means to digest that gift. That's why he's very merciful. He sends acharyas and sends a practical method. So, it's not painful. Initially, a child might think studies are painful, but later, he'll say, "Yeah, that's interesting, now, isn't it?" So, initially, initially, it might seem funny. That's not the inspiration factor for us. In fact, we hate, we hate the thought that it is helping us. No, we don't like that thought. Devotee should not like that thought. Devotion gives me peace, me, oh no, forget it. Devotion gives Krishna happiness, okay, good, this is good, I'll do that. So that, that's a training, that's all, that's all training. <laughs> okay, so we have room. And Thank you, Babu. So you are mentioning about the propaganda, Prabhu, the word propaganda, and you were telling like, you know, we should be uh, very creative and yeah, yeah. we should put our attention to create new methods of preaching. But we see that, you know, there are lots of new methods that are coming out and not yeah. everything is, you know, successful and not also everything is creativity, according to the teaching, te cre teaching creativity, of yeah, Creativity within the bounds of Prabhupada books and scriptures. Creativity outside scriptures, that is creativity in ignorance. Creativity within the bounds of scriptures, that is creativity in goodness. So you are right, it should be within the bounds of scriptures. That is presumed in that, when you talk of propaganda. You should not go, yeah, you are right actually, this is an important point. Important point. If you well, I have another point to, you know, to understand. The thing is that you are, uh, when you are speaking, because you have uh, read uh, Srila Prabhupada's book very deeply and thoroughly. <laughs> That's why you have inside, okay, Srila Prabhupada has uh, presented this philosophy of mm. this Sampradaya so, in these uh, mm, words. Mm. But if somebody comes from another school, say for an example, somebody is from Sri Sampradaya is coming and telling, okay, our Acharya has also these this, uh, teachings, but words may be in different way or phrases may be in different way. So Well, then he can show that. <laughs> Good. If your Acharya is having that, it's very nice news. <laughs> you also become perfect. That's okay, but it's not there. This what Prabhupada has given, it's not there. Because Prabhupada's teachings are tailored for this time. Those acharyas were 900 years back. Then they were instructing, no? They were different kind of situations. So it is it's suited for us. 
and future. Prabhupada has given like that. So, uh, so even Sri Sampradaya, uh, so Chinna Jiyar, like one of the main, he also praises Prabhupada books. In fact, he got enthusiasm to preach from Prabhupada books. He admits that. Even, even Madhva Sampradaya, Puti Ke Mat Pajavar Mat Swami, they said, they, they themselves said, what we can do in 100 years, 800 years, Prabhupada did in 10 years. And Swamiji, uh, I think Pajavar Mat Puti Ke Mat, I don't know exactly which one, they, he went to foreign America, he came here. It's not allowed to cross Indian border. But he said, well, I read Prabhupada books and I got inspired to teach. And they are, you know, they uh, frankly admit. So then, it's not like ordinary, the charges are admitting. Prabhuji, in, early in the lecture you were talking about Nam Ruchi and um, later in the lecture, you know, about preaching. So, Nam Ruchi, uh, there seems to be an understanding that one has to put effort in chanting the Holy Name and preaching may, you know, not give that much time. Mm. Mm. So, I just wanted to understand what exactly then is Nam Ruchi. If somebody says that, you know, too much time, I'm not able to give time to chanting. Okay, okay. So, this point of balancing chanting and service and reading books. I'll talk on the last day. But the idea is, the more you chant with Ruchi, the more you like to preach. Prabhupada says, the, the, the result of good chanting is you want to serve Krishna, isn't it? That should be the result. So if, you chant with, if you chant with taste, you will want to share that thing, no? With, with everybody. And that's preaching. Ultimately, what's the end of preaching? Chanting. If you can't bring that person to chanting, what's the point of your preaching? What you're doing? So it, it, is, it goes together. It goes together. That's how it goes. But um, that balance, I'll talk about that in the last class, about balance. So Prabhu, uh, we chant to purify ourselves. So how is it service to Krishna when we chant? Yeah, that is, that is next lecture. On Saturday morning, I'm going to talk about the art of chanting. It's a good question. How chanting is service? Now that I'll ask you. I'll ask you all first of all <laughs> on that day. And that's the whole lecture all about that, the art of chanting. If you can figure out this, your chanting becomes perfect. But to figure out this, that's the most difficult part. How that is service. We know that is service theoretically, but how exactly that is service? That's why I'm going to talk there. Isn't it? Okay, so if there's no question. Um, thank you very much for hearing and listening to this. So my whole intention by this seminar is to show you how to read Prabhupada books. I mean, people, 90, 95% percent devotees are not reading books, by the way, as far as my analysis. Some devotees are reading also, but not as it has to be read like this, from a very practical manner. So I just helped you to see how you should read Prabhupada books and make it a point to read his books daily. That's very important. Don't let even a single day go without reading Prabhupada books. And the, and the practical thing to do in your life, like you are all busy people, no? Unnecessarily busy. <laughs> let me say this. So, but how to do is uh, keep Prabhupada books in your bedroom. Don't keep, don't make a shelf in your house. First of all, don't. It's waste of money. It will be always in your shelf, as it is here. Yeah. You will do nothing. You'll never read it. You see, you see all these magazines and newspapers. So we keep these magazine newspapers where? No, on table, no. So that some guest comes, he'll pick it up and read. So keep Prabhupada books in your bedroom. That's, or in your drawing room, on the table, in your bedroom. So whenever you sit, maybe sometimes you'll see and pick it up and read, no? Like that. It, it'll help you to <laughs> read those books. And you keep it in bedroom and whenever, as soon as you get up, before getting up from your bed, take that book from behind you and read it for half an hour. Otherwise, if you start doing your life, then you'll not get time. Am, am I right or not? You might think, you know, today I'll read, but you'll not get time. But that's some practical insight I'm giving. I do that. Because our life is also busy, you have to talk to many devotees. So as soon as I get up, before keeping a foot on the ground, I take that book 
and read for half an hour. And uh, so in that way, even earth will feel blessed. Otherwise, earth will think, what is this burden on me, you know? <laughs> One more burden. <laughs> So, you have to first keep keep Krishna in your mind and then step on the earth. Isn't it? So, that's a very good thing, morning. And when you sleep, before sleeping, also take that book and read for half an hour. So, like that one hour reading you do, without disturbing your schedule. And you can keep on doing that. Any other schedule if you make besides this, that's good, that's additional. But those kind of schedules I have seen practically. Sometimes you'll do, sometimes you'll not do, sometimes here and there. But this schedule you can do anywhere on this planet, no? Even if you travel, you can do. You are traveling somewhere, relative or somewhere, you will sleep definitely. So you get up, read half an hour, sleep, you read half an hour, that's how you read Prabhupada books. And if you want to learn shlokas or Prabhupada's, learn it in bathroom. That's all. <laughs> I'm speaking something practical. Not <laughs> Don't say, I told learn it, learn shlokas in bathroom, that's... <laughs> But that's what you will be able to do it. The bathroom you spend like 40 minutes, you know, like, mo like most of you. <coughs> Isn't it? We spend like 5-10 minutes, we are like brahmacharis. But for grastas it takes time. So 40 minutes you just, you just read one verse, go in bathroom, repeat, keep on repeating. After 40 minutes when you come out, you will remember that. I have tried this <laughs> with many congregation. In, uh, so I was in Charlotte, somewhere, yeah. Yeah, I was in Omaha. I told devotees to do like that. In three days, they learned, they learned six shlokas. And they said, oh, it works in bathroom. What to do? <laughs> so keep on repeating, repeating, and you are undisturbed. So like that, you can read many Prabhupada books. So one hour daily you get for 360 days, 360 hours. You can finish many books. Okay, thank you very much for coming here. Now we'll all do the Amadharashtakam. And if anybody wants these pen drives, they can have in English and Hindi. All this what I've got to say. I've got to say many things I can't share. I can tell you now everything. But I'll discuss. Saturday morning, we have Art of Chanting seminar, 7.30. And then Sunday evening, I'll do Art of Service. Krishna Nam, Krishna Kam, Krishna Dham. And if you want this pen drive, I'll be there outside on the table and box. And thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay. Let's get on with the rest of them. Okay. Thank you.